Hello everybody, Scott Golden here with the uh, Impact Genesis review for the 9th of January 2021. So there were things in here I liked, there were things in here I didn't. Um, for the most part though, I still find these Saturday shows to be unnecessary. I still find them to be oversaturation of product and I still find them to be part of a faulty formula that started probably 20 years ago, 25 years ago, where there had to be monthly big events versus, let's say, every other month or every three months or, you know, something like that. And I think that issue needs to be undone. It may never be undone because it's become such a part of the culture but I don't think it's good for, for the wrestling business to have oversaturation of products. Anyway, uh, Josh Matthews and Madison Rain, who actually I thought was leaving the company to pursue life outside of wrestling. Maybe this was um, filmed before she decided to do that. I don't know. Um, open the show. They run down the card. Video package of Ace Austin Suicide. Uh, Demore, Shelley, and Saban talking about suicide and who could be under the mask. Austin talks about himself and his greatness and winning the X Division Championship again in 2021. Uh, Ace Austin with Madman Fulton defeating Suicide in a Super X Cup first round match. Really good match to begin with. Suicide is um, dominant for the majority of the match. He goes for a lot of uh, submission holds, obviously, akin to being THP, and then um, gets cut off. Uh, suicide regains momentum, and um, it's only in the final minutes of the contest that Austin wins the match, uh, regaining control, and then we kind of get the back and forth that's more typical. Austin does a great deal of selling here. He's phenomenal. Uh, suicide gets a couple near falls. Um, and does a deadlift suplex that's worth seeing. Um, distractions from Fulton are a major part of the match. Uh, Austin hits the fold for the win, and obviously the winner of Divari versus Cousin Jake will face Ace Austin. To me, that's a drop in value. Uh, get a, getting a video of Casey Navarro and Christian Blake. Navarro cuts a promo. Um, he shows he has charisma. He hasn't been on a stage this big, um, and it's going to be interesting to see him develop. Uh, Christian's more humble, reserved, um, you know, uh, he kind of needs to find a persona that's outside of being a good wrestler if he's going to go anywhere. Um, um... So, Blake Christian defeats Casey Navarro in the first round match. Match story is pretty basic. Um, um, it basically, Navarro he is is, is kind of up showing Christian. Um, it's a game of can you top this in a lot of ways. Uh, match starts pretty slow. Matt wrestling counter wrestling counter holds early. Uh, Navarro shows off uh, a good deal of submission work. Would be interesting to see him with TJP and always turning back to the camera. So again, showing that charisma, which I think I think uh, Impact as a, as a company needs more people with charisma. They've got a lot of a lot of flat talents or a lot of gimmicky talents, but natural charisma is something as a company they're lacking. Uh, Crispin Christian tries to. Uh, bring the match into another gear. Navarro um, does match him when necessary. Um, Christian makes a comeback and goes nuts for a couple of minutes, hits a twisting splash for a win. Uh, the winner of uh, Trey Lamar versus Crazy Steve gets the... Gets the um, the you know to to go into the next round um video package for Davari and cousin Jake I'm not a fan of the cousin Jake thing I mean it 
it worked in the 80s when things were more gimmicky. I don't think gimmicks like that work today. I think it's over the top and campy, and I think if you're going to do it, you have to have a more 80s-style promotion. He just seems out of place here. Um, basically, Davari talks about being all over the world and having the experiences of doing that. Jake uh, talks about his story with Eric Young, which is lame in comparison. Cody Diener and Joe Doring uh, again talks about being the biggest guy in the tournament and using his size and power advantage to win the tournament. Cousin Jake defeats Davari in the Super X Cup first round match. Um, not a fan of this. This is kind of treated like a hoss fight, although Davari's not big enough to do that, so a mini horse, maybe a pony. Uh, anyway, this clubbering and brawling, um, certainly a much different process, uh, than average. Um, kind of going from corner to corner, chops and strikes and clotheslines, and some dives from Jake, which seem out of place with him being the biggest guy in the tournament. Uh, Jake dominates early because of the size advantage, misses a crossbody, and goes uh, neck first into the ropes, Jake does, and then he gets worked over by Davari, who's focusing on his ability to stand. Man can't stand, he can't fight. End of that, uh, Jake powers up, makes a comeback for some near falls in the last couple of minutes. Uh, you know, they kind of are more evenly matched. Uh, Black Hole Slam from Jake gets the finish. I just, this shows the drop-off in talent in Impact, at least from my perspective. Um, there's a time when this type of gimmick wouldn't leave the independent circuit, but with so many national promotions now in the U.S., you, know, you got your Ring of Honor, your AEW, your WWE, your Impact. Not that four promotions is a lot, but with the nature of... Um, with the nature of wrestling schools being in an abysmal state and there not being guys to teach proper approach, um, talent like this and gimmicks like this are allowed to go. And it's just sad. Anyway, Ace Austin and Cousin Jake in the semifinals. Video package for Trey Lamar and Crazy Steve. Lamar is very bland. Uh, Steve is... Fine, I guess, but again, it's a gimmick. It doesn't belong in an X Division style tournament, in my opinion. Uh, Crazy Steve defeats Trey Lamar in the Super X tournament. Um, Steve basically does a bunch of gimmicky stuff against Lamar. Um, this freaks out Lamar, and his strategy doesn't come together for him. Um, he continually acts, asks his opponent to act normal. Would that actually happen in a real fight? Probably not. Um, but Steve, you know, tries to, for example, lick his opponent during lockups. It's just mental games, and I guess there's a place for those type of gimmicks. But again, this tournament doesn't seem like that's where this place is. Uh, Lamar manages to cut off... Uh, Steve hits a second rope Russian leg sweep, slowing down his opponent in the process. Strikes and near falls. Uh, Steve hits a second rope DDT for the win. Um, you know, obviously going into, um, going into the, uh, semifinals, Crazy Steve and Blake Christian kind of sets up a guarantee for where we're going. Gia Miller interviews Moose about his main event match tonight. He says Mac made a mistake by requesting an I quit match. Uh, he said he did that out of anger. He says he wants to make Moose angry, and so does Rich Swan. He'll send a message to Swan via Willie Mac. Moose said that he's going out there to hear Mac quit. Um, he's looking to send him to the hospital, uh, and... All these things will make Mac quit. Um, Moose, to me, is a missed opportunity. I think there was a time when you could have built the entire promotion around him for an extended period of time, six months or longer. I think that time has passed. 
I think they do, in Impact, need to heat up a new star, especially with the AEW exposure. I mean, nothing wrong with, you know, let's say 150,000 to 250,000 viewers each week. Uh, lots of promotions can't do that. But at the same time, when you have a network backing you, if that's the best you can do, it's because you don't have talent that's really caught on. Um, Ace Austin with Madman Fulton defeats Cousin Jake in the Super X Cup semifinal. Um, Clash of Styles match here. Austin is, you know, not the small guy in the promotion like he has been in other places. Uh, match sees Austin um, basically running and bumping, taking shots at Jake. Jake has a hold on Austin and um, nail him with one strike and break his momentum. This is a good story being told. Jake hits a dive on both Austin and Fulton. Um, Fulton's angry there, and he kept getting in Jake's straight face, distracting him. Austin takes him out and cuts him off. Fulton never lays a hand on Jake in the process. Um, action final minutes is really good. Lots of back and forth, quick near falls. Um, basically, we see Jake use the sidewalk slam to, that he used to defeat Davari. Um, Austin blocks a gut wrench suplex from the second rope and then hit a springboard fold for the win. Match is probably the best on the show, I would think. Um, uh, Ace Austin is waiting for the winner, Crazy Steve and Blake Christian, which is pretty obvious, I think, even going into it. Um, Rich Swan and Willie Mack are talking backstage. Swan tells Mack that he knew Moose is dangerous, but he knew Mack wouldn't quit. And uh, then we see Blake Christian defeating Crazy Steve in the other semifinal match in the Super X Cup. Um... He Christian's sporting a black eye from his first round match. Um, uh, Crazy Steve is talking to his pet monkey in between offensive maneuvers in the corner, kind of doing the old uh, head or mind gimmick from George Steele and Al Snow, respectively. Um, you know, Christian accidentally kicks the monkey, and Steve fires up. I don't necessarily like comedy for this type of thing. Um, Crazy Steve snaps and goes nuts on Christian for this. Uh, match is fine. Uh, I guess Crazy Steve's character will get over with some. Uh, there are a couple of momentum switches, and second half of the match is a little more even than the first half. Uh, Blake Christian catches... Uh, Steve in the ropes and hits a springboard 450 for the win. Um, Steve is a was a little more aggressive in this one. Maybe that's going to play into future character developments. Uh, Super X Cup final. Ace Austin and and uh, Blake Christian will be up later. Miller interviews Jazz about her match. Jazz says that she'd already announced retirement, but she couldn't turn down Grace's invitation to wrestle. On impact, Jordana Grace beats Jazz. To me, this is a fall from Grace, no pun intended, for Jordana Grace. Um, to be in the title picture, you know, what, two, three months ago, and to now be kind of thrown into a retirement legends match with Jazz, I just, I'm not a fan. I don't, you know... Certainly, maybe it's a dream match for her. Certainly, there's something to be said for beating a legend, and she does here. But, you know, it, it's just not... To me, it's not good use. It, it, it screams of, we don't have anything to really do storyline-wise, so let's throw this together. Uh, Jazz makes her Impact debut, or made her Impact debut as uh, Grace's partner for the Tag Team Championship Tournament a few uh, months ago. They did defeat the team of Killer Kelly and Renee Michelle, but they fall to Havoc and Nevaeh. Uh, Grace asked for the match before Jazz could retire. Basically, a bit of a strong style fight. Uh, pretty even match. Physical match. 
striking between the two. Uh, Grace does end up coming out ahead. Uh, several slams. Jazz doesn't have a, a fast page match. Um, but she can pull off good spots here and there. Um, you know, match goes on a bit longer than it should, perhaps, but they do kind of find their groove during the second half of the match. And, um, in the end, finish, uh, we see both women trading pinning attempts and roll-ups in reversal, um, Grace reverses an O'Connor roll and gets a win here. Um, if this is the retirement match for Jazz, it's a good way to go out. Um, you know, this is, it's, it's respectable. Miller interviews Blake Christian about the finals. Christian said um, he's very emotional and that he was going after Ace Austin. Uh, who always has an ace up his sleeve. Ha, 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 nice pun. Ace Austin does defeat Blake Christian uh, for the 2021 Super X Cup. Austin sends Fulton to the back to start the match, saying this, saying that he'd win it by himself. Eventually, I want to see Austin and, and, and Fulton go at it, in all honesty. Um, lots of high spots, uh, aerial maneuvers, and true to typical X Division style. Um, the good news is it doesn't look, it doesn't look staged, it doesn't look choreographed, it just looks like two guys who are using athletic moves because they know how, um, two guys who seemed comfortable in their own skin and comfortable in the air, um, basically match is even at the beginning, uh, Austin becomes dominant just with a higher athletic ability. Christian does get hope spots throughout to keep him in the match, and had there been a crowd, I think this would have gotten over. Austin does quick cutoffs just as quickly as Christian is kind of going for him. Uh, Christian's offense uh, does wear down Austin, um, and he actually runs away from his opponent. Um, top rope flashes and double foot stops. Christian goes for 450 that he had used to defeat Crazy Steve earlier. Austin dodges it and hits his own senton for near fall. Um, back and forth sequence. Uh, a roll out of the way, the twisting splash. Christian dodges the fold and goes into a pin attempt. Several reversals. Both men trade strikes. Uh, Austin drops Christian with a second uh, attempt, and this time more successful one of the fold for the win. Great match. Ace Austin should be a main eventer in 2021, no doubt. Uh, Post-match, Fulton comes out to celebrate with Austin. Scott Moore comes out to give him the winner's trophy and congratulate him. Then your main event, I'm not a fan of this at all. Willie Mack uh, defeat, uh, defeated Moose in my quit match. Um, I see n absolutely nothing in Willie Mack. He's a bloated junkyard dog wannabe to me, and I just I don't get why people think he's he's good. He can be carried to good things, but I just he's not somebody I would build around in 2021. Um the, the guys have been feuding for several weeks. Nothing major. Nothing that warrants an I quit match, but that's neither here nor there. Um, then, you know, obviously, Moose moving towards the world title shot is cut off by losing this match, one would think. Um, and then the match, um, you know, basically is... Do you quit? No. Do you quit? No. Do you quit? No. Uh, referee is continuing to ask. Uh, Moose gets sent into guardrail and slammed on the ramp, and the ref continues asking. It's overkill. Uh, Moose uh, does actually start to ask the referee to stop asking. I don't know if that was shoot or work, but it was funny anyway. Um, the wrestling was fine. Um, I mean, there's a lot of striking, um, a lot of brawling, and then some steel chairs come into play here. 
Mac uh, does get strung together offense, um, landing several chair shots on Moose, and then hits some frog splashes as well. Guy that big shouldn't comfortably do a frog splash. It should look more awkward. Uh, Moose does not get enough to win. Moose later recovers and hits a um, modified finish on the top rope to the floor through a table. And this goes in Moose's direction for a while. Moose comes back with uh, a several bookends. And then Mac responds with a superplex on a pile of chairs. Ouch. Uh, finish sees Moose, Moose knock out Max with, a, with uh, several MMA-style elbows to the face. Uh, he makes fun of Mac for not being able to quit anymore. And then uh, puts a chair around the neck and... That goes. Rich Swan comes out and asks Moose to stop. He's going too far. Uh, Mac is already knocked out. He can't defend himself. Moose isn't stopping. And Swan offers Moose a title shot he'd been asking for if he'd let Mac go. Moose said now he had what he wanted and he quits. I just, I don't like this finish um, in the sense of. Shouldn't winning a match be just as valuable as a championship match? And, you know, it's... It it felt too long. Um, it's... I mean, it forces the hand. And ultimately, maybe Moose wins the championship after all this. And they build around him for a while. But it's... It's interesting. Anyway, that will close us for today. I will have more of the Mid-South series up. Um, Also, I encourage you to check out my main channel, Golden Opportunities Coaching, where we talk about life, business, and relationship coaching issues. And until then, keep your feet on the ground, your mind in the moment. Till next time, everybody.